during the Cretaceous period, around 125 million years ago, amidst a landscape dominated by temperate forests and freshwater lakes and streams, a small mammal prowled for food. Walking on all fours, and about the size of a house cat, it stumbled upon a dinosaur that was three times its size, and that pranced about on two legs. The mammal was Repenomamus robustus, and the dinosaur was a plant eater named Psittacosaurus. The dinosaur's skin was scaly, and it possessed a small parrot-like beak for a mouth. Its species was a common sight during the Cretaceous, and would eventually give rise to the famous Triceratops. In contrast, the mammal had a thick layer of fur and a set of razor-sharp teeth. Upon seeing the dinosaur, the hungry mammal lunged at it. Making contact with its prey, the mammal dug its teeth into its ribs while clinging onto its lower jaw with its forepaw. The mouth of the dinosaur became a gape as it uttered cries of pain as the mammal continued to grip and pull upon its lower jaw. The dinosaur squirmed under the bite of the mammal and attempted to fight back with its relatively hefty weight before collapsing upon the mammal, slightly crushing the mammal's hind leg. Suddenly, a volcano erupted in the distance, followed moments later by a lightning-fast mudslide, which buried the two fighting animals within seconds. Over time, debris from the volcano and mudslide fossilized the two animals whose fight became frozen in place. 125 million years later in 2012, a farmer unwittingly dug up this fossil in the northeastern part of China in Liaoning province. The archaeological site is located upon the Yishan Formation, which in turn is within the Luja Tun fossil beds. The site is just as rich with dinosaur fossils as Pompeii is rich with ancient Roman treasures. This is why the site in China is nicknamed the Chinese Pompeii. The farmer promptly contacted paleontologist Gong Han of the Hainan Vocational University of Science and Technology. Han immediately drove to the site, after which he scheduled a time in the future for the farmer to completely dig up the fossil. After being unearthed, the fossil was transported to Han's lab in Jingzhou and was carefully analyzed and interpreted. The fossil is an incredibly rare discovery due not only to the near-complete nature of the skeletons of the animals, but also because their violent interaction is forever captured by the fossilization. Direct evidence of the predatory behavior of an extinct animal is by itself incredibly rare. The fossil is also the first known evidence of a mammal preying upon a dinosaur. The scientists ruled out the possibility that the dinosaur was already a corpse when the mammal dug its teeth into it, because the bite marks on the skeleton are not consistent with that of a scavenger feeding on a carcass. Additionally, if the dinosaur had been dead for some time, it surely would have bore other bite marks from other scavengers. The most compelling part of the fossil that all but guarantees that the mammal was attacking a live dinosaur before becoming buried a moment later is that the mammal's hind leg is trapped underneath the hind leg of the dinosaur. This means that the dinosaur likely collapsed upon the mammal once they were attacked so viciously. If the mammal was simply scavenging, the mammal is unlikely to have put its hind legs underneath the dinosaur carcass it found. Furthermore, there are no bite marks on the dinosaur aside from the one between its ribs. In contrast, a scavenger would have gnawed upon and tore up multiple different sections. The mammal's limbs were also postured in a way that is inconsistent with the scavenger scenario. Instead, its posture is consistent with the way predators in the modern era have been seen latching and clinging to their prey once they dig their teeth and claws into them. Scientists have also ruled out the possibility that the volcanic mudslide or other geological forces put the two animals together into a pose. Mammals and dinosaurs shared Earth for tens of millions of years, between the start of the Triassic period 230 million years ago and the era when the age of dinosaurs ended with their extinction 66 million years ago. In the popular imagination, mammals during the age of dinosaurs are often assumed to have lived on the periphery of the dinosaur-dominated world, being unable to compete due to their small sizes. They are assumed to have led lifestyles oriented towards scavenging, which did not pose serious competition for the dinosaurs and the ecological niches that they dominated. However, 
The fossil of the mammal and the dinosaur shows that mammals saw dinosaurs that were at least three times their size as potential prey. There are also not many dinosaur species that are in the mammal size range. Therefore, the mammals likely regularly attack dinosaurs larger than themselves. The scientists, however, contend that it likely would have been risky and difficult for the mammal to take down such large prey. In theorize, it only would have done so if it was desperately hungry. Further bolstering an aggressive profile for mammals is the January 2005 fossil discovery of an R. robustus mammal with the remains of a Psittacosaurus found in its stomach. These are the same species that were found in the 2012 find. Remarkably, both the 2012 and the 2005 fossil discoveries were dug up from the famous region nicknamed the Chinese Pompeii. When asked if the mammal in the fossil could have won its fight and had its meal, a researcher of the remains said that it was definitely possible, and cited that in the present day, small predators regularly kill animals that are much larger than themselves. For example, a weasel can take down hares five times their weight, and a wolverine is able to kill caribou and moose. The researchers also acknowledged the possibility that the mammal fighting the dinosaur could have been hunting in a pack, but admit that more evidence beyond just what the fossil provides would be needed to support this theory. It is also unclear if the mammal attacked fully grown dinosaurs regularly or if it just preyed upon juvenile dinosaurs. Unfortunately, there are some concerns among scientists outside of China that the fossil may be a forgery, as China has been known to falsify archaeological finds in the past. Scientists in the West explain that the fossils themselves are genuine, but some are concerned that the pose of the fossils may have been altered by human hands in some way. Further complicating matters is that scientists were not part of the original dig that unearthed the fossil, as it was first discovered by a farmer before they reported their finding to a scientist nearby, who then supervised everything moving forward. There was also a two-week period between paleontologist Gong Han being notified by the farmer of his discovery, and the moment when the fossil was fully excavated and transported to Han's possession. Skeptics are very concerned that this gap during which the specimen was not watched over by scientists compromised the fossil's security and raised the possibility that it could have been foraged. Han and his team have tried to dispel such suspicions by saying that they carefully examined the lower left jaw of the mammal, which is a region that would be very hard to forge authentically as it is located in the interior of the specimen. The team found that the teeth of the mammal sliced into the dinosaur's ribs and back into the ground. Additionally, the sediment that the teeth sank into bore no signs of having been moved or altered. The sediment adjacent to the fossil was also the same as the sediment from the fossil bed where it was dug up. These explanations have generally been accepted by the global scientific community. However, they believe the scientists in China could have done more to verify the authenticity of the fossils, such as by using a CT scanner. Other scientists, however, have sided readily with their Chinese colleagues, arguing that forging fossil parts under unexposed rock would be incredibly difficult to fake. More scientists in the West hope to someday have an opportunity to study the fossil more closely and more frequently, and to quell any concerns that the global scientific community may have about its authenticity. Today, the fossil is now on display in a museum attached to a primary school in the Chinese city of Waihai. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed my documentary, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash world chronicles.